see, I don't even know if this thing is. I guess it works. All right. Three, two, one. Introducing Project Thrust Arrow. something cool again. All right, we've built a lot of mutants here on Innovation RC. So back in 2017, I built a jet car called Jetlag, and that's actually this guy. He was actually hybrid powered, which means he was also powered by a motor attached to a drivetrain, which also was fisted with the EDF that was in the middle. Now, I actually updated that to a twin EDF setup, which was otherwise known as twin turbo, and he actually was really, really quick. Project after that, we took the twin turbo attachment and mounted it on a Lozy Mini 8, which was a much smaller vehicle. And it was actually capable of hovering, if not flying, but there's no rudders on it, so we couldn't actually fly. But I held it in place and it was still plausible to actually fly. <laughs> but today we have one vehicle that is specifically built to do what it's gonna do with an EDF, otherwise known as an electric ducted fan. It will be 100% powered by thrust, and that's also braking, reversing, and all that, so it is pretty sketchy, but it's 100% only for what it's made to do. An EDF, otherwise known as an electric ducted fan, is actually a brushless motor that is attached to a little turbine that produces thrust, otherwise known as it's going to propel itself through the air by actually grabbing it and Spinning it out the back, basically. Now I'll give you guys a quick overview of Thrust Arrow and what's really inside of him. Now what I wanna say before anything else is that I really took weight into consideration. Less weight will make us accelerate a little bit quicker, of course, but now we also need to stop. And being that this is 100% thrust powered, well, really, we don't have a mechanical brake, so we actually have to rely on reverse thrust to slow us down. Obviously, being lighter, that's going to enhance the braking properties. And just to show you how light this thing really is, well, I'm holding it like that, and I have no strain or stress whatsoever. I could keep it like this for probably a good couple minutes. Uh, very, very lightweight, carbon fiber, everything on here. Look at this, I could almost use this thing as like a weapon, that's how light it is. Onto the front, we have our mini micro servo that is actually wedged in between with two little pieces of foam right over there. Not sure if you guys could see. With this application, it is perfect, I would say. Up next, we're gonna have our receiver that is custom wedged in between the carbon with foam. And the antennas are also held by foam too, but they're also stuck onto the side of the carbon with other foam. And yeah, it seems kind of flimsy, but honestly, it's not going to go anywhere. It really won't. And it's also very lightweight, so there's not much weight drag that's actually going to want to rip it out where it's currently at. Next, we can see our other wire that is actually leading to the ESC. Now, this is actually a Castle Mamba X ESC, and it can run up to 6S amazingly, which is actually pretty good because it's only like about an inch or so long, and it fits perfectly square inside the carbon. Uh, really hard to see, but it is absolutely perfect. Then from the ESC, we have our motor wires leading from there to the EDF motor. If you guys could see the wires in there, and that's all that it is. And right behind the ESC, we have our little LiPo battery, and it is a five cell. If you guys were wondering as to why I even have my charger out here, well, that's because this EDF is really power demanding, and I'm only gonna get like three or four good pulls until, hey, the ESC is gonna be like, you're running low on voltage, I'm not gonna run you anymore, we're done. So we actually have two batteries, and obviously when this one dies, we have our other one that will be charged via DC power with an Innovation RC4S battery. Now, take into consideration, this is a small 5S battery, 1300 milliamps, and these Innovation RC batteries cap out at over 11,000 milliamps. So if I were to charge two of these batteries on here, that means we could pretty much charge six or seven of these guys until that thing wants to die. I'm probably only going to have to charge up once or twice, but hey. And these batteries snug perfectly up in the rear end with a little battery strap. So it's not going anywhere. It's perfectly stable. And it's just pretty safe in the back over there. Honestly, I couldn't pick a better place to put it. Obviously, we don't want it in the front. Let's say anything happens, well, it's going into that guy. And we do not want that. Now, as for the back, guys, you guys can see that it is actually a solid axle because, well, this is really a drag car. Otherwise known in the RC world, it's a rail car. Hence why we had the front splitter on, which actually helped with front downforce. And I actually kept the rear wing on as well because I really want to keep as stable as possible. It might interfere a little bit with the thrust coming out, 
but I could always remove it if need be, but I'd rather stay safe and have a little bit more traction all around. We're not gonna have any individual connection with the axle because it is 100% thrust power. That's why these guys are spinning individually all by themselves. So there's like no rolling resistance. So here, we're gonna test out the rolling resistance that this thing has. And you guys can see, I'm not touching anything. The EDF isn't spinning. It just wants to roll. It is super duper smooth. Uh oh, let's not go in the grass. Alrighty, so we're gonna power her up. Battery's plugged in. Switch is on. Racers, start your engines. Oh my God, there's so much power in there. Alrighty guys, hopefully everything goes well here. That's just applying a little bit of power. Nice, a little bit more. And there we go, those are our brakes. So yeah, they're weak, but they're there. And I'm pretty happy to have any kind of brake, honestly. Well, it is on a rail car chassis, guys. So let's try to drag race this. Let's see what it does from a dig. Ready? <laughs> That's pretty good. Wow. Not enough brakes, but everything helped. <laughs> let's try it again, guys. Ready? Three, two, one. Oh, it got stuck again. We were so, we were pulling ourselves out of the grass at that point. The only thing I dislike about this chassis, to be honest, there's zero ground clearance. Meaning even on this road crown right here, you will get stuck if you hit it at a perfect angle. All right, so we'll start the GPS now. You guys can see everything is at zero. Yep, there we go. We're gonna start from way over yonder and we'll bring her on back. Hopefully everything goes well. Here we come, guys. Very nice. Everything worked out all right. 43 miles an hour. <laughs> that was about half throttle, too. I'm kind of scared to even go up more than that. It is so sketchy to drive. Oh, that's battery already. Uh-oh. <laughs> so when the battery goes, you have no brakes. Hopefully we make it. Oh. That's okay though. All right, so our first battery died. We're gonna take our new one over here. Plug this bad boy in into a 5S, 1.3 amps on 5S. Tap and hold, tap, and we're charging. Yeah, everything is pretty low. You guys can see 3.3 volts per cell. Usually a fully charged battery is 4.2. We have a fully charged battery right here and we're gonna put her in. Oh no! She went a little bit off-roading, it's not good. Yeah, well. Oh, it still works. You guys like my servo saver? Servo will never die. <laughs> the fact that everything still runs, I'm pretty happy. It's a really well-built vehicle for what it is. We'll just do some free driving right now. It's pretty fun and entertaining, honestly. It's really cool. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more. Hit up Innovation RC on Instagram. We'll have more cool pictures, videos, and other cool things on there if you want more than what's just on YouTube. Now, if you guys want some of these awesome, beautiful batteries for a much larger build, I will also have a link in the description below if you want to get your hands on some of these beautiful bricks right here. Alrighty, guys, make sure you stay safe and have a good one.